Welcome to module two of the Community Engagement Learning Package, which is on strengthening health systems through community engagement. Module two is split into two parts. The first part in this video is an introduction and overview to health systems. The second part and next video is on strengthening health systems, primary health care and essential public health functions in the context of making progress towards important goals such as universal health coverage and the sustainable development goals. My name is Sakif Mustafa and I work on health system strengthening and resilience at the WHO headquarters. I have a medical and global health policy background and I've worked in a range of settings in clinical care, academic and community settings in both high and lower income countries. And I'll be taking you through module two of this learning package. In this video, I'll introduce the concepts of health systems, health system strengthening, and health systems resilience. I'll then go on to describe the importance of systems thinking, the idea that individual parts of the health system do not operate in isolation, but rather they work together. Last, but certainly by no means least, I'll explain the important role that communities and community engagement can play in health system strengthening and in building resilient health systems. A health system can be defined as all the organizations, institutions, resources, and crucially the people, so patients and families, as well as healthcare professionals, whose aims are to improve health. Hospitals, healthcare providers, doctors, and nurses are well-known parts of the health system. Other important parts of the health system include government authorities like ministries of health, public health institutes, and health financing bodies. Private sector entities are also an important part of the health system and can include diagnostic centers, pharmacies, and medical product manufacturers. Communities, of course, are a crucial part of health systems. Within the community, individuals, community leaders, civil society groups, and non-traditional health providers such as faith-based and religious healers can all play an important role in improving health. Like any system, all these different parts, often referred to in a simple and useful heuristic as the health system building blocks, are interconnected. In order for a health system to operate effectively, these different building blocks must function in a coordinated manner. The main purpose of a health system is to act to improve health. Health systems do this through delivery of promotive, preventative, curative, rehabilitative, and palliative interventions which are a combination of public health or population-based health actions and personal health care or individual health services. The functionality and performance of health systems are demonstrated and can be monitored through its services and improvements in health and well-being, crucially of communities. As alluded to in the previous slide, the health system building blocks are a simple way to conceptualize the different parts of the health system. The WHO Systems Framework describes these as leadership and governance. For example, effective leadership and governance ensures the existence of strategic policy frameworks, effective oversight and coordination, the provision of appropriate incentives, and ensures accountability. Next, the health workforce. A well-performing workforce consists of human resources aligned with the appropriate needs of the population, and requires effective management, skills, and policies. Next, health financing. A good health financing system raises adequate funds and resources for health, protects people from catastrophic financial expenditure, it allocates resources based on need, and purchases goods and services in ways that improve the resilience, quality, equity, and efficiency of the system as a whole. Next, information systems. A well-performing health information system ensures the production, analysis, dissemination, and timely use of reliable information. Next, medical products, vaccines, and technologies. For example, procurement and supply chain programs are necessary to ensure equitable access to quality assured and cost-effective medical products like personal protective equipment or medicines and therapeutics. Service delivery. This is the interface between the health system and communities. Good service delivery comprises quality and safety, access, affordability, and coverage. Of course, all these different parts of the health system do not operate independently, 
they're interconnected and interdependent, interde interdependent on each other and the people, culture, networks, and environments within which they operate. These interconnections determine the functionality, outcomes, and performance of the health system. For example, service in terms of service delivery, this is the outcome often of different inputs such as the health workforce, finance, and medical products, and is the key interface through which patients, people, individuals, and communities, and families interact with the health system. Resilience is an important concept in the context of health and broader systems that affect the health of communities. On the left, we have the UN definition of resilience as it applies to health systems and beyond to the whole of society, including individuals, households, and communities. Resilience can apply to and has been used extensively in agriculture, food, and climate systems, and ensuring resilience across different systems can have a huge impact on health and well-being of communities. In the context of health systems, though there are many ways to define resilience, it's essentially the capacity of the health system to prepare for and effectively respond to crises, maintain its core functionality, and informed by these various lessons learned, reorganize and adapt as required. A definition of health systems resilience is provided on the right-hand side of the slide. Health service resilience and health systems resilience are intimately related, as service delivery is in many ways the product or outcome of the other health system's inputs. Resilient health services are of sufficient quality, accessible, and maintained in all contexts. For example, even during disruptive events like infectious disease outbreaks, conflict, or environmental disasters. Resilient health services are able to adapt and recalibrate to the evolving needs of the communities they serve. This requires a whole society approach to ensure that the necessary resources are available and that there are flexible arrangements in place between the different health system building blocks to adapt to these evolving needs. Being prepared and pre-positioning the required policies, planning, financing, investments, and other resources in a proactive manner is key to the resilience of health services and systems. Systems thinking is an approach to problem solving that views problems as part of a wider dynamic system. It refers to a set of dynamic analytic approaches and tools that seek to understand how systems behave, interact with each other, the environment, and influence each other. It promotes the idea that actions and outcomes are best understood in terms of these interactions between the different elements of the health system. As such, it requires in-depth understanding of the linkages, relationships, interactions, and behaviors among the different elements that characterize the entire system. In the health sector, this involves considering the context within which health systems are operating in, for example, the social, political, economic, and environmental context, and the context of people and communities, their languages, cultures, and social norms. It involves considering the nature of the relationship between the building blocks. It involves considering the combined effects emerging from interactions among these different building blocks. And it crucially involves considering how the health system itself interacts with people and communities. For example, if you don't have the necessary numbers of and a skilled health workforce or insufficient funding and investments, how can the health workforce be sufficiently motivated to provide quality and resilient health services? How can they have the necessary resources to do that? Another example is ensuring your population has access to COVID-19 vaccines. This requires political and financial support at the national, regional, and global levels. This is because most of the manufacturing base for vaccines is located in G7 or wealthy countries. If you don't have the right research and development capacity, if you don't have the supply chain systems, the, the necessary financing and leadership and governance, you won't be able to procure the necessary vaccines to, to protect your population. And even if you do procure a certain number of doses of vaccine, without systems thinking, you may not be able to transport them or store them safely or identify and vaccinate the high priority of most vulnerable individuals and communities in your population. Or you may not have a suitably competent and motivated workforce to deliver the vaccines to the community and to individual patients. Building on that last slide, on the need for systems thinking to build resilience, what we need to remember is that 
is that it's the same health system that has to be able to cope with infectious disease outbreaks like COVID-19, Ebola, HIV. It's the same health system that has to deal with an aging population and changing demographic. It's the same health system which has to deal with non-communicable diseases like diabetes and heart disease. It's the same health system that has to deal with antimicrobial disease and climate change. It's the same health system that suffers from conflict, war, and economic recessions. It's the same health system that needs to be able to innovate, reach out to different sectors, transform, and recover from disruptive events. And it's the same health system that ultimately needs to meet key health objectives, such as the SDGs, universal health coverage, and health security. So it's the one health system one workforce, one global supply chain, one information system that has to be resilient and respond to this plethora of threats. COVID-19 and the SDGs provide a really significant, potentially once in a century opportunity to fix and transform our health system to meet these various threats and protect the health and well-being of communities. Resilient health systems can bridge the different international health and development agendas, such as UHC, health security, the SDGs, and it can help create a common incentive to invest in health systems moving forward. Many of the threats that we face today, you can see on the screen, extend beyond the traditional health sector and require multi-sectoral action, including multiple stakeholders, which I'll take a little bit more uh, of a look into in the next slide. Building health systems resilience against public health emergencies must consider the various contributory factors which span beyond the health system, Thus, there is a need for including multiple stakeholders in strengthening the health systems that respond to these threats. One of the most important being people and communities. And this is all required for multi-sectoral action. In this slide, there are a number of important health and non-health stakeholders identified from the local up to the global levels. It's important that as you consider the important role of communities in strengthening health systems, that you're able to identify important stakeholders in your own wide-ranging and varied contexts. It's important to note that the resilience of health systems and communities are interlinked. Therefore, health system strengthening and building health systems resilience requires strong consideration to the role of communities, given that health systems certainly encompass communities and people. Community health resilience has been defined as the ability of a community to use its assets to strengthen public health and healthcare systems and to improve the community's physical, behavioral, and social health to withstand, adapt, and recover from adversity and disruptive events. There are a number of examples of how communities can play an active role in health systems and how health systems can optimally serve communities. Communities must participate in health policy making and planning and have a say in how health services are organized and delivered. Conversely, the skills and the distribution of the health workforce must cater for the local and community epidemiological profile. If, for example, we can anticipate that malaria or HIV will become endemic soon in the community, what will the community's most pressing health needs be? The health system has to anticipate this with the engagement of the community. What about, for example, in conflict situations? Through community engagement and active participation, we know that in many conflict contexts, things like nutrition and sexual and reproductive health services become especially important to communities. How can the supply chain be oriented to reach all communities, including those far away from the city and in rural settings? What if the infrastructure is not there? Can we use innovative technologies like telemedicine for the purposes of improving the health of communities? Crucially, the prioritization of health services needs to be aligned with the needs of the community, both using a bottom-up and top-down approach. And communities need to be engaged in the decision-making process at every single level. A few of the common features of resilient communities and health systems include social connectedness, that depends on the country and cultural context. But for communities to be resilient, there's a need for formal and informal social support mechanisms, such as family bonding and the correct environmental factors that enable that. It's important to involve community leaders to develop bridging between the health system and communities to identify critical um, issues that the community faces. High quality, accessible and equitable services help develop trust between the community and the health system 
and contribute towards greater uptake and utilization of essential health services. Engaging with the community can enable the promotion of individual and community health um, through things like community-based initiatives that encourage children to eat healthy, for example, better utilization of outdoor spaces, and ensuring there are green spaces, parks, and recreation or sports facilities in the community. The community can play an important role in communicating important public health messaging in an accessible, culturally appropriate, and local context relevant manner. They can help improve health literacy, pool resources in times of crisis or hardship. Furthermore, community health volunteers can serve at the primary healthcare level and in safe childbirth, immunization, and for example, in contact tracing. A concrete example of the community playing an active role in the health system is through community-based surveillance. This is where the community actively participates, often through community volunteers, in detecting, reporting, responding to, and monitoring health events, such as infectious disease outbreaks, but also other health threats, such as increased rates of non-communicable disease, like cancer and heart disease. CBS is particularly effective as communities are well-placed and usually the first to detect and monitor health events in populations. They can mobilize local resources and take early action, including requesting assistance from higher administrative levels, for example, central and national levels, if needed to protect the community's health. Communities also play a critical role, for example, in the rollout of vaccines. A recent example is the successful mass vaccination campaign in the UK for COVID-19. In the picture on the slide, you can see that local resources such as community sports hall and in some cases schools and colleges were also used to facilitate the delivery of the vaccine. Local resources were clearly repurposed to meet the health needs and community volunteers, local general practitioners, nurses and other healthcare workers, including retirees, all came together to deliver, to deliver a successful vaccination campaign. Through locally led and engaged approaches, health risks are better communicated to communities. This enables better understanding of community perceptions, beliefs and values to inform interventions and address is issues such as the underutilization of services. There's increased trust between the communities and health service providers, as often it can be friendly faces that are the ones delivering the health services continually throughout the patient's and community's life course. There are many examples of how communities can be harnessed to strengthen health systems, and it can be incredibly useful to think of examples in your own specific countries or some national and local context as to how the community is involved in promoting health and well-being. So before ending this video, let's do a very brief recap. The video introduced the concepts of health systems, health system strengthening and health systems resilience, and described the importance of health systems thinking in improving health. Communities are a critical part of health systems and it's important to utilize systems thinking, i.e. how the different parts of the health system operate together to improve the health and well-being of communities. Resilience is critical to ensure the community receives high, receives high quality, accessible and affordable essential health services in all contexts, even when there's a crisis as severe as COVID-19. The video also explained and provided examples of how communities play an important role in health system strengthening and resilience, such as through building trust, utilizing community-based surveillance of local health events, and utilizing and repurposing community resources for interventions that protect and promote the health of communities. Thank you for listening to this video and see you in the second part of module two.